Shalom and Buchim Ubaim. My name is Rabbi Yitzhak Shapira, and I'm of your host of the show Chizuk Emuna, Strengthening of the Faith. Recently, we received a very interesting question that I would like to read to you because I think it's worth, uh, worth uh, looking into. And here's the question How can you reconcile your messianic faith and your Trinity with the Shema? As the Shema, Deuteronomy 6, 6 4, clearly state that God is one, yet you believe in three gods. Dear friends, let me first of all state clearly that we do not believe in three gods. We believe in the Shema, as Yeshua himself quoted the Shema in Mark 12, 28, and he said there is no greater mitzvah. But at the same time, the word Echad in the text here can mean multiple manifestations of God. Let us dig, dig deeper into that so we can understand what it is about. Perhaps the first a good starting point is understand what Judaism believes. Judaism is based uh, itself today, modern Judaism, on uh, the 13 principles or articles of faith by the Rambam. And here's the second article of faith, and it says this, in essence, what the Rambam is saying is not only that God is one, but God has only one manifestation. God is only a spirit. The word says God is not a man, that he should lie. This is, this is in numbers, etc., etc., God is a spirit and he cannot have a compound uh, uh, manifestation to him or a compound unity. First of all, let's reject it right off the beginning. According to Jewish mysticism uh, uh, and what's called the ten, ten manifestation, the ten sphere, God have ten manifestations, not three, but ten. Three out of the tens are called in, uh, in Hebrew, Arich Anafin, or in Aramaic, which means those are heavenly manifestation, the other seven are Zahir and Afim, those are earthly manifestation. So right from the get-go, let's uh, just put that aside and say Judaism does support the idea of God taking uh, many manifestations to, to bring His perfect will to earth. But let's ask the question, what the word of the Holy Tanakh, the Holy Bible says? In Bereshit 126, 27, we read those words, Vayomer Elohim, and God says, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. The words there, let us make man in our image, our likeness, are in plural. It is true that verse 27 read as following. Verse 27 read, Vayivra Elohim et Adam, and he created the man. Now, it's interesting. The verse starts, verse 26 starts with plural, plural form, but verse 27 immediately following it is a singular form. Every verb in the Hebrew language can take two forms. It can take a singular and it can take a plural. In verse 27, it is take a singular form. God is one, but in, within this oneness, there are multiple manifestations of God. As a matter of fact, the sages of the Talmud and, and later eras like Rashi and Rambam were struggling with this verse. One of the interesting uh, thoughts that came is by Rashi that had been accepted, and he suggested the way to, to deal with this difficult verse that God consulted with the angels when he created heaven and earth. We must reject this claim because it says in Nehemiah 9.6, Ata hu Hadonai levadecha asita et hashamayim. God created everything all by himself, according to the word. As a matter of fact, it says also in Job 38.7, it says that the angels, he said, when the morning stars sank together, all the sons of God shouted for joy. The angels clapped for God. They cheered for God when he created everything. They have not taken part of creation. Some other thoughts uh, had in Judaism came from the idea that God went and spoke to Mother Earth uh, to receive a uh, 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 some power from Mother Earth. God forbid! God is a sovereign God! And we cannot reject the idea that, that God created everything. Yeah, if, he, if He's not a sovereign God, all-powerful God, then He's the wrong God. The key is that the word Echad in Hebrew 
can mean, doesn't have to mean, but it can mean compound unity. Matter of fact, we have a different Hebrew word um, called yachid that is used, for example, in Genesis 22 with the binding of Isaac, that means a unity that cannot be compounded. But if we are honest, we see that in Deuteronomy 6.4, that is not the word that is used. Moses clearly knew both words. He knew the difference between Echad and Yachid. But he chose to, to use the word Echad in the Shema. Matter of fact, in the Torah, it tells us that when God created the day, it says in Genesis 1.5, Vaikra Elohim Laor Yom, he created the light and he called it a day, and the darkness he called Laila or night, and it was one day. Again, it is one, but in this one there are two parts. Or it's when we read uh, later on in Genesis chapter 2, Therefore a man should leave his, his father and mother and shall cleave to, his, to, to unto his wife, and there will be basar echad, one flesh. Again, two, two manifestations, two entities. Often Messianic Jews are being accused of misquoting and mistranslating the Hebrew Bible. Let us look at another example from the stunning mistranslation from the Jewish Publication Society itself of this verse. It says, let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. A clearly messianic verse. A clear messianic verse. But this is not what the Hebrew says at all. The Hebrew says, Yismach Israel Be'osav. The word there, Be'osav, Osav, is mean makers. As a plural, not a maker, it's a maker. So again, we are asked the question, how can we have a maker? The answer is simple. God is one, but within this one, there have been multiple manifestations. Or when God says, you are to remember your creators in Kohelet. Zechor et Boecha. The idea there is a great premise about the word Boecha that you will learn in the next lesson. The idea that there have been multiple manifestations of God are found within the Jewish Targums, what we call the Jewish translations of the Bible that were developed and read during the first century, uh, proved up to these days. One of the Targums, called Targum Yerushalmi, has been developed in the first century since people did not speak Hebrew, they spoke Aramaic. And here is what the Targum says on a few verses. I'll give you one or two examples. One of them is from Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. Uh, a verse you probably read many times that God is walking, walking in the garden and, he, 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 and he's uh, about to speak to Adam and Eve after they have sinned. And here's what it says. It says, and they had the voice of the Lord. That's the way you read it in, him, in English. But that's not what the Targum says. The Targum says, and they had the voice of Mimra of the Lord. What is Mimra and who is Mimra? Mimra is an Aramaic word that comes from the Hebrew word Davar, which literally means the word. What the scripture in essence is saying is they had the word of the Lord God walking in the garden toward them. The voice of the Lord is what they heard. It's a mimra. It's one of the manifestations of God. It doesn't say the Lord is used the word mimra, which means literally the word. We read in Genesis chapter 15 in the, in the uh, sixth verse, and Abraham, it's talking about Abraham. Abraham believed in the Lord and is counting him as righteousness. Once again, the Targum makes the point and he said, and Abraham believed in a mimra. And it's counted him as righteousness. The word mimra here is, uh, again, it's, the, it's equivalent to the word davar in Hebrew, which means he believed in the word. Amazingly, the word mimra appears in the New Covenant scripture to describe God himself correctly with the in perfect harmony for the Targumim of the third, first century in the book of John. One, one we read, in the beginning was the Davar, the Mimra, or the word, what we say in English, the word, it's the word Mimra, the same one that was there in Genesis, in the Garden of Eden. And the word, or the Mimra, was with God, and the Mimra was God. The point is clear. Judaism 
according to Genesis and according to John, support the idea that God had multiple manifestations. As a matter of fact, one of the greatest beloved sages of our time, 19th century, Rabbi Yechiel Tzvi Lichtenstein, a messianic rabbi who devout to Torah, wrote this word about John 1 1. He said, The word Davar, the word, or in Greek, Logos, is known concept among the sages of Israel, as we see in the Targum, Yonatan ben Uziel, who live in the same generation as Yeshua of Nazareth, as we, we know. The word Logos, or Davar, representing the Targum, Demim Ra. See more in Genesis 46, he says. He said, the phrase, the word was God, is parallel to John 1.14. The word was made flesh. The point is very, very clear. It is the manifestation, one of the manifestations of God, who called the Davar, who is called also the Messiah, who was there in Genesis 1, who was there in John. It's the same, the same entity that was represented. Let me present to you a question today. Who created heaven and earth? The answer is clear. It is God. God, we saw it. God alone created, according to the book of Job 38.7, God alone created everything. But I want you to pay close attention to what the psalmist had to say. He says this in Psalm 33, 6. He says, By the word of Adonai was heaven made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. The point is clear. By Davar Adonai, which is the same thing as Mimra, everything was created. The Mimra is a manifestation of God that created everything. The Mimra was there uh, in Genesis, it was there in the garden, it was there to justify Abraham, and it was ultimately manifested itself through Yeshua Unatzeret, who came as the Messiah of Israel. But it does represent the Echad, the, the oneness of God. This is not idol worship, beloved. This is basic Judaism.